Hey guys, Tyler here. I'm going to solve some incredible murder mysteries from the new game, Case of the Golden Idol. Let's go. The explosive events in the forest cabin. 34 clues. So this is probably Gorin's carriage, David Gorin's. Henchman for hire in Timberbook region, Billy Cracker, Hardy Abe, Little Billy, and Jack Nails. I'll return to this book once I observe the scene of the crime. A box of confectionery, what does that mean? Candy. And then here are just some hats, sketches of hats. Take me inside. Oh, hell of a scene I just walked in on. Someone who's just dead. Oh, this is the person who went under the name Ash Blair. He's breathing, but appears to have lost consciousness. So not dead. I do not care what means you use to acquire what I need, but remember to be discreet as always. Note that I do not want it to decay. The more recently it has died, the better. From Edmund Cloudsley. One of the old workhouse geezers croaked yesterday. I will arrange for a cart to move the corpse if you send me directions. And be quick before they bury him. I do not want to dig up that stiff. He's got a loaded pistol with a shot. And there's a scarecrow in the coffin. Is this lady? Ah, by the gods, what was that? Gentleman robber strikes in Westbrook. So there's Walter Keene. He held up a coach. Robbed the passengers. So he's on the loose. Looks a lot like this gentleman but different hats. But there was drawings of multiple hats, and I'm sure that both of these hats were in that drawing. Possibly upper right? Mm, something's not right here. They are both wearing a mask and having a gun. This guy's a sword, but the drawing does not. I mean, he could be the same guy. He looks like he's just shown up. So everyone, you are now allowed to visit any villager city without my permission. At no point may you disclose the location of the cabin. So David Gorin's in charge of all security at arms. Lucia Smith will taste any food you cook before is presented to me. Little Pip in charge of Black Bestia and Golden Doubloon. Both must be fed daily. Sounds like horses. From Edmund Cloudsley. And this looks like a little Pip here. Go, coin, go. Coin's the dog. Well, I know you're a little Pip. Oh, I don't actually recognize your face that well. You're Lucia Smith, right? Surely. I don't know. I'm just putting that right there right now. Urr. So that's coin getting them. Ah! <laughs> Got a sword, a ring with a ruby, confectionery. Okay, so candy definitely came from the uh, wagon then. Well, there's a the next room open with an explosion. So this is the murder. Hey, look, it's the golden idol. Crazy. It's a man with a club, golden teeth. A door whose lock has been busted open. You can actually see the remains of the lock right or the like the the bar to latch it shut. Notice the explosion didn't do that. It was busted open from the outside. This man who's got a note. I finally have the location of my target. Meet us on November 10th, Friday in the Timberbrook Inn and bring all your tools. You will get your share as we agreed from WK. Well, he's also got a nail on his hand. So who is he? According to that one list of wanted people. Ah, probably Jack Nails. He's even got nails on his hand. So this is definitely Jack Nails. And then, what's this? There's a vase. Oh yeah, so the vase has exploded. With it, the golden idol. This is not the spontaneous combustion glyphs. In fact, it's something entirely different. What's this? A small weight is tied to a pulled down lever at the back of the idol? Why is that? You've got a bell pepper. No, it's a rotten apple and a green apple. Here, I've got a man hiding in here. He's got a book with a bunch of spells. Is this uh, Edmund's research? Or not Edmund's? Sebastian Cloudsley's research? This simply did not work. After I aimed at the sealed vessel and activated the idol, both air and vessel disappeared. Upon consideration, it was an obvious mistake. And then, isn't this what was inputted? Attempted with this input, and it was a definite improvement. It decreased the amount of air, but curiously, did, still did not create a complete vacuum in the sealed vessel. Hold on, what exactly was set on the idol? So the cane with two boxes. Yeah, so it's this one. What else is there? Gold filtering. So yielding gold from seawater. Unknown effect. If the implications are what I surmise this could be a tremendous discovery, the next step is progress from fruit to something more organic. Oh, this is like a necromancy sort of thing. Like they did necromancy on fruit, as you can see here, and then he wants to do it on a body. Then the spontaneous combustion, but you have to do freezing first. And now I have every clue. So the actual spell created a minor vacuum in this vessel. 
And then what's the final note? Safety notice. Upon pulling the trigger, if the glyph input is meaningful, the idol will perform the intended action on the target it can see. If the eye is red, it is ready for the input and will turn blue afterwards. If the eye is blue, you can only perform, oh, a hook with a dot and it will turn red afterwards. What? So there's the hook and there's the hook with the dot. And the eye was blue on the idol, as you can see here. But here is the hook without the dot. Oh, so I've got to decode the idol and then figure out who's who. I see. So this could take either a blue or a yellow input. I mean, he knew it was going to happen. Also, this is Edmund Cloudsley. I didn't realize he went bald. I'm also confused of what they want exactly from me about the slots. I mean, the only thing I know for sure is that this symbol correlates to gold. A lot of the other symbols show up twice. I know this bottom sigil has something to do with freezing and spontaneous combustion. So what, exploded? There's a good chance that the double squares has something to do with air. This circle with lines above and below actually show up in a lot of places. It shows up in the possible necromancy, restoration of matter, but it also shows up in spontaneous combustion and freezing. Matter seems to make the most sense for this one. And then these two, maybe this is like increase and decrease. I mean, interesting between spontaneous combustion and freezing and the gold filtering, the cane with the dot is always the first step and then without is the second step. So we could try increased and decreased and I could try flipping them. Oh, that's just bad. This is decrease matter. This could be vase. It could also be heat. Heat would actually make sense here. Yep. Yeah, because first the heat is decreased, then it's increased. So on the idol, got an increase of air that's automatically triggered. Well, yeah, that's a lot of air increasing. Next, I probably want to figure out who these people are because a lot of them are probably henchmen. This guy's got a sword and a loaded pistol. And then there's this guy. Well, he could be Hardy Abe since he has a cart. Yeah, actually, he does have a cart. So that's who he is, Hardy Abe. Also, go coin go. See, I thought this would be coin. Oh, it's probably golden doubloon. Because golden doubloon is a coin. So yeah, golden doubloon. And then I got two henchmen to go. So one of them's little Billy. The other one's Billy Cracker. One of them enters through chimneys. The other one's a robber. So this guy is probably Walter Keen. I think it just makes sense. So then the last guy's either little Billy or Billy Cracker. He's got a club, so he's probably not the lock pick. He's probably a brawler. So Billy Cracker makes the most sense. So it's a hell of a coordinated effort here. Oh, good God, I'm off? Okay, well, I don't know Billy Cracker for sure. Jack Nails is right. Edmund Cloudsley is right. Walter Keen might not be right. I guess it's these two that are wrong. Would this make sense being David Gorin? I feel like I messed up somewhere, somewhere along the way. This is David Gorin. Well, it's close to right. So I guess I'm piecing together the story how like Edmund wanted a corpse so he could upscale the apple spell. So he had him go get the corpse, but as a scarecrow, you the guy with the carriage then? Hardy Abe? One of you is Hardy Abe. That's the one. Well, nonetheless, I have the people. Let's put the story together now. So I had figured out Edmund Cloudsley needed a corpse. Someone along with accomplices delivered a coffin. Well, we could say Hardy Abe delivered it. Upon entering, Walter Keen suddenly shot David Gorin. Because David's basically lying there. He's been shot. So it seems like David wanted Hardy Abe to bring the corpse. But Hardy Abe had other plans. Meanwhile, Edmund Cloudsley did something to the amount of air in a sealed vase. I don't know actually if he increased or decreased it. He probably increased it, yeah? And then when Hardy Abe and Jack Nails entered the room, the vase exploded and killed them both. Fuck. Technically, we don't know who shot David Gorin. I don't know who I actually want to have the person who delivered along with the accomplices. He's got, he just has blood on his head. Oh, so he is very likely clubbed then. If he's unconscious but breathing. So he's definitely not shot. Definitely clubbed. On um, It's not Walter Keen who did it. It's the guy with the club, uh, Hardy Abe. Now, I don't know if that's... Yeah, okay, that is right. To gain entrance to Edmund Clousey's secret forest cabin, gentleman robber Walter Keen pretended to deliver a corpse to Edmund for his experiment. 
Uh, so I probably could have put any of the three in place of Hardy Abe. On entering the cabin, the robbers ambushed the servants and Edmund locked himself in his study. While the robbers were sawing through the lock, Edmund prepared a trap with the idol that killed two of the intruders. Edmund, you dirty dog. And uh, there's a little bit more. What is this? Then, Sir Coroner, the bandits accidentally set off my master's laboratory chemical ingredients. What happened afterwards? I managed to fend the rest of them off. But my master, Lord Edmund Clownsley, got caught in the blast, which se severely disfigured him. And soon afterward, he died. Bless his soul. How unfortunate. I would have liked to know that he lived. But we've never seen a body. We don't have full proof that Edmund Cloudsley is dead. Just this man's account. And he was passed out. He even lied about fending off the other attackers. The dog got to the other attacker. Chapter 3 coming up. Oh, what is up with this dude? Good lord, what have I gotten myself into? This one at least starts peacefully. There's a bush. What the? With a bound and gagged dude? Well, what's your deal? Mmm. No, what's your deal? Tattoo depicts a hand and an eye. Oh no, we can be identifying people by tattoos now. How many hooligans are hidden in these woods? To David Gorin? For reliable service from Edmund Cloudsley. And that's the coat. Oh boy. The Ash Blair. David, the gathering will be on March 14th. To follow our plan, we should be there at least two hours before midnight. The target will arrive in full costume. Grab rope and weapons. WK, who is that? Is he bait? There's multiple bags by him. Well, oh, he's got the stuff from the previous scene. The sketches. I mean, this could technically be anybody. Yeah, he's got his stuff. What about over here? Footprints, and it looks like someone was dragged. More footprints. They're all leading towards this bush. More footprints. And what's in here? Oh, this is a lair, if I've ever seen one. Brothers wear masks appropriate to the house. Dark hands, proud beasts, and water snakes. So this guy is of the dark hands house, or the guy we saw. Brothers wear robes appropriate to their rank. Master, steward, and initiate. So he's an initiate of the dark hand house house can i look at this so he's a dark hand initiate oh we're gonna be seeing a lot of creepy people what about these scrolls january 5th 1789 masters i ventured on the order's mission to reclaim our fire breathing relic and with great resolve punish the despicable enemy i with a few brave companions fearlessly entered his hideout in a remote hunting cabin but the devil had prepared a treacherous trap and an explosion slaughtered my dearest friends as we entered his study the devil being edmund cloudsley thanks to my stu sturdy physique i survived the blast only to be assaulted by the enemy's lackey an assassin warrior david gorin and a pack of bloodthirsty hounds. After an hour of fight, I received numerous deadly wounds, in spite of which I prevailed and defeated my assailants with my martial training. I discovered the enemy's dead body, slain by the trap of his own making, but no trace of the relic. So Edmund really did die. I'm forced to go into hiding because the government's watchmen are tracking me. Once I have recovered from my deadly wounds and shaken off the watchmen, I will send you the next report. May the griffin awaken Walter Keane. I do recognize you from the previous case. So this is October of the same year, 10 months later. Masters, must apologize a thousand times for my absence, but my road to recovery was full of peril and valor that cannot be sufficiently conveyed in writing. The government dogs and spies chased me tirelessly and I was forced to seek refuge in Aquitania to recover from my still dire wounds. There I finally bested my pursuers with the help of Lazarus Hurst, a young resourceful gentleman whom I met in a remote manner one dark winter's night. Not only did he earn my trust by stepping into the fray against the villains, but he turned out to be well versed in the arcane arts. Of course, not yet close to your skills. I finally recovered and planned to return to Albion. I suggest that Lazarus would be a fine addition to the order. I vouch for him and will invite him to undergo the appropriate trial. May the Griffin awaken, Walter Keane. They're awakening the Griffin? And then this is 1790. Illuminated masters. I object to the admittance of the individual Lazarus Hurst to our brethren. I submit that our darkened hand brother Walton Keane, who vouches for him, cannot be trusted because he is a liar and a thief. 
I'm certain that on dispatching our enemy, he kept the golden fire-breathing relic for himself. Nothing will move me on this. He must produce the relic, apologize personally to me, and afterwards be expelled from our brotherhood. Sir Jeffrey Sinclair. Let's go up. Oh, lots of people, including a dead cult man. First, the surroundings. It's done when an accuser has challenged a defender. Both drinkers must be barefoot. The substance is added depending on the severity of the accusation, including deadly poison. So you add substance to one of the cups. Defender chooses first. Accuser chooses remaining. Both partake in wine cups. So it's like Russian roulette, both poison. Ritual of squabble. Only initiates can be defender and accuser. The sword must be borne by any dark hand. Required decorations of the hall. The grim reaper. The never tiring teacher. The feeder of mouse. Ritual of conflict. The accuser must deeply hate the defender. The sword must be borne by any initiate. Required decorating of the hall. The never tiring teacher. The keeper of treasures. The mirror of the soul. So what ritual are they doing? There's two others. Ritual of dispute. Only stewards or higher rank can be defender and accuser. The scepter must be borne by water snake master. And then more required decorations of the hall. And ritual of discord. The houses of the accuser and defender stand behind their brothers. The scepter must be borne by dark hand master. And more decorations of the hall. More about those decorations later. Let's look at this goon. The griffin has spoken. He's a tray with a vial of unknown substance. It's green, so likely poison. There's this man. The griffin has spoken. There's two empty cups. Or almost empty. And it looks like it was a one versus one here. This man has been poisoned because he lost the poison challenge. Epic content. The griffin has spoken with the tankard. Let us await the results from the chamber below. Oh, you've got your results. I don't see why you need to wait. And you, the griffin, has spoken. So uh, lots of items, lots of rings. So they did this, but which was the ritual over? For starters, I could try to figure out the roles of the masks. Because it does appear that masks are roles, or maybe coats are roles. It would make sense, though, that coats are like house. Let me go back. Brothers wear robes appropriate to their rank. Oh. And brothers wear masks appropriate to their house. Glad I checked. It's actually very important. So robe is rank. There's two of each rank, and the houses are divided three, two, one. Both? of the partakers of the ritual were of the same rank. So it could be squabble, because they could both be initiates. Conflict, it seems like it could be anyone. Realistically, I should just look at the decorations though. And it's actually the decorations, they all look the same, it just depends on where they are. So we have a Grim Reaper, a key, and a book. So which does this match up to? Grim Reaper, teacher, and feeder of mouths? Teacher could be book, feeder of mouths does not seem right. And the other one doesn't have the Reaper. Both of these have the Grim Reaper. The Keeper of Treasures could be the key, and the Never Tiring Teacher being the book. Makes a lot of sense. Or the Keeper of Treasures being the key and the Speaker to the Blind? I don't think the book is the Speaker to the Blind. I would think it's the Never Tiring Teacher. So a Ritual of Dispute. So only stewards or higher ranks could be a defender or accuser. So Yellow Coat is either steward or master. However, it says the scepter must be borne by Water Snake Master. And that means this this guy, this guy is a Water Snake Master. So I can have Blue be Master and White Coat be Water Snake. So that means Yellow Coat must be Steward because it was either... Wait, do I have this backwards? I do have this backwards, I believe. There we go. Steward must be Yellow Coat. And then Initiate must be Red Coat. And then the others are Proud Beast and... Well, actually, I don't have the third one. Why don't I have the third one? Oh, Dark Hand. So there was the, a dispute. I can actually put this in the top left, that it was a dispute ritual. Ritual of dispute. Brown or white. I feel like I could just give these people their ranks. Oh, but I should fill in these masks first. And let's await the results from the chamber below. I guess that's my cue to go to the next room, which is over here. Oh, oh boy. Let's start with the dude. Prepare to receive what you have earned. Oh, two brandings. An initiate and a lion. So then, this is February of 1790. Brother, 
A member of our order has proposed the new candidate to join our brotherhood. Our brother's trustworthiness, however, has been challenged. Therefore, we've decided to take measures to resolve the fate of these individuals. If the brother proves himself, he can vouch for the newcomer. If the newcomer survives the appropriate trial, he would join our ranks. You are summoned to join our gathering on March 14th and fulfill your roles in the rights of the brotherhood, the Council of Masters. This guy has earned his right. I have signaled to Griffin who I am. I accept my fate, whatever it may be. What's this? Oh, so there's four tests that you may have to endure, depending on who's administering it. And this is a red-faced steward that's administering things. Either a proud beast or a dark hand is what this guy is. Which, I knew that. His mask is either proud beast or dark hand. Not helpful. But I could look at what... Uh, trials he's enduring because it's one of the top two So one he carried something on his back possibly heavy two he eateth food three <laughs> Yeah Four he must brave the elements Let's see. Well, I would think inception makes the most sense like the first one he's carrying a house that he's got to be slow when doing it The second one is the weakest link fire with eating. I don't know But water droplet works with fish and tree is like in nature and so is this you know He's in the elements. He's outside so I can see this being a proud beast steward So let's see if I'm anywhere close proud beast Which leaves the final one as dark hand Let's go Absolutely nailed it was kind of sketch, but I'm glad it worked out now. I can get this dispute and this will be right. Oh No, I'll come back to this. I'm sure something's Got to change here though. I did discern he was enduring the test of inception and this is a proud beast Steward and this guy probably has a name is very likely the guy who was vouched for Lazarus Hurst There we go. Awesome. So now I just got to figure out the main scroll. Well, the top part's all about the dispute. The bottom part is uh, Lazarus Hurst passed the inception ritual to become a proud beast initiate based off the branding. Someone was challenged to a dispute ritual and then a person posing as another person did something to, oh, it's got to be signal to blank with a blank which blank had no blank. The other person drank the other cup and died. Now, realistically, one of these has to be Walter Keen. Well, probably has to be. Let's see if I can figure out which one he is. Lazarus Hurst is a dark hand brother. Well, he clearly won. I could try this as Lazarus Hurst. Or not Lazarus Hurst, Walter Keen. Oh, interesting. So this was equally correct. Wait a second. This guy who's tied up. He's an actual Dark Hand Initiate. Is this game trying to get me to think that this Dark Hand Initiate isn't a legit Dark Hand Initiate? Wait a second. There's a lot coming together here. Someone posing as the Dark Hand Initiate signaled to probably Walter Keen with, by holding the, the cup, by holding the tankard, which cup had no poison. They used cheat. They cheated. Clearly, they played card shark. <laughs> they used the hand signal. Right hand means right cup is safe. Left hand means left cup is safe. So they ambushed the dark hand initiate, and then someone was posing as him. We also know that Walter Keen was challenged to a dispute ritual. This dark hand initiate is wrong. I oh, so David Gorn had to be alive then. That's why he has David Gorin's bag there, because David Gorin is a part of this. He, along with David Gorin, ambushed the Dark Hand Initiate. David was posing as the Dark Hand Initiate, and actually, let me prove it. David Gorin, as the name, should be right. Yeah, it's right. He signaled which cup had the poison, and then the Water Snake Steward drank the other cup and died. Oh my god, cool! Ah, oh, that's sick. This game is sick. 
After being challenged to a ritual with potentially deadly consequences, Walter conspired with David to devise a plan which would ensure his own safety. They captured a Brotherhood member on his way to the gathering. David took his costume so that, during the ritual of dispute, he could indicate to Walter which cup was poisoned. Therefore, Walter chose the safe cup because he was defender and got to choose first, and his opponent drank the poison and died. That is so cool. Oh, on a sick spot to end the episode. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed more cool detective mystery coming at you soon. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace.